Hi guys, welcome to Art and Alpacas. Today's Monday and don't ask me the date because I'm so goofed up on the date right now. Um, but we're in, we're at the end of March, you guys. Hope everyone's doing okay and that you're just kind of able to stay home and get some crafting done. Um, I'm super excited to do these on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So hopefully um, you can all uh, tune in and join me whenever I'm doing them. So today I have a special guest artist, of course it's Hannah, who's going to be coming in and uh, doing a little bit of a project for some of the older kids, teenagers on up. The one I'm going to do today is for uh, the quite a bit younger kids. So I also, once this is done, it's 24 hours is on my story. And then when it's done, you can find it, um, it on YouTube under Bergstrom Farms. So that is my channel. It's um, a public channel right now. Hopefully it will continue to be until something, you know, crazy happens. But it's a public channel so you can find all these videos. If I remember to save them, then they'll be on there so you can rewatch them. I love to look around and find other artists that or other art teachers and homeschoolers and people who are really crafting and making cute websites. And I want to um, give them a shout out because the idea I got today is from a really great website that parents can use that is amazing. And it's called thecrafttrain.com. So the craft train is, it's just filled with fun ideas. And the idea today I'm going to use is from the craft train and it is um, the mini banjo. So we're going to make this little musical instrument and then Hannah, like I said, I'm going to teach you this and then Hannah will come in and teach a little bit of a more advanced project. So the mini, um, one more thing I need to talk about and that is, um, it's, oh, I didn't put it up here, but it's Clever Octopus. Um, Clever Octopus and I are kind of teaming up and um, you can, let's say today you watch the video or you watch it on YouTube and you want the supplies, just go, if, if you're in Utah, this is the way you do it. <laughs> if you're not, sorry, go to cleveroctopus.org and you'll see a place that you can buy um, supplies on there. It says shop, you can go in and they have all the coolest little craft kits. And the kit for this, they've already made this banjo kit up for you, is $1.50 and they do it at curbside. So I thought that was super cool. I mean, that's cheaper than you could get at the craft store. You just call them on the phone, they bring it out to you, tell them what they want, but you have to order it online. So supporting local business is awesome. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? So it's super easy, super fun, and then you can have a little band at your home. Like if you guys did this, there are so many other little instruments that you can make, okay? so. It actually, I don't know if you can hear this. It does play a little sound. So if you have a piano or something at home, last night, I, I don't have a piano, but last night I got um, on a piano app and I was trying to see what note they were. And I was like, oh, is that a, you know, is that an, a, a G? What is that? And I was trying to figure out that you could play, you could make up little tunes, you could write it on, uh, write it down on paper. Um, of course, wherever you move the rubber bands to, if you spread them out wider, they're going to change the sound. And the wider they are, I have found, the less easy it is to keep them on there. So I'm going to show you how. We don't use hot glue on this because it's going to melt the rubber bands. So you can see on the back that we're going to need to use um, duct tape. So I'm going to move the camera down so that you can just see my hands and um, because it's kind of distracting if you don't just see my hands, okay? I'm gonna move it forward just a little. And, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, the first thing you need, you're gonna need a lid, okay? So the lids, I have different sizes. Here's the lid that doesn't work. See this little guy from like a Snapple? Does not work, it's too tiny. Now, if you only want two strings on there, I guess that would work, but it doesn't sound great. So this is a salsa lid. This is a jam lid. Um, so the one I used 
was about the size of a jam lid. I kind of like that size. So, but a salsa lid works great. You guys make sure too that you are recycling glass. Glass is the best and easiest thing to recycle. I gotta put a push in for recycling. Rinse it out, put it in a recycling, uh, go find a recycling bin online and get your glass recycled. Okay, now, here we go. So, you'll also need one of these, I like the, the bigger ones, kind of the wider ones. Watch out for slivers. Um, the skinny ones don't quite work as well. You're gonna need, uh, these are like little um, rubber bands for looms, but I bet that the hair rubber bands work just as well. Remember, we're trying to use a lot of things that we have at home, okay? So we want to try, I got these at Michael's. Michael's does curbside pickup also, you guys. So, utilize curbside pickup, okay? So, we want to get these, um, but you can dual use these loom ones as they're exactly like the hair rubber bands, I promise you. Okay, so you could also use acrylic paint and a paintbrush if you want. Um, here's a big deal, washi tape, washi tape, washi tape. Um, this is one of my most favorite washi tape things. It's really skinny, but it's a giant dispenser of washi tape. Um, obviously, you can tell I haven't been to the store because I have the same two washi tapes I've been using for like two weeks. <laughs> so, actually, three. Then you're going to need some glittery little things. You know what works best are the ones that come on a sheet that you just peel off for scrapbooking. Those, those work the best. But I didn't have those, and I didn't want to go to the store. So I just use these little ones. Okay, are you ready? Now, what we're gonna do, I think you're gonna need probably a glue stick at some point also too, because it looks like sometimes the washi tape comes off the back. So the first thing you wanna do, if you want, um, I should have done this, but I would decorate this part. I would either paint it, um, you could literally bejewel the inside of this, you could, um, it doesn't take, um, it's so slick that you can't use marker on it, but you could use washi tape on the inside of here. Um, you can use metallic markers on the inside of here. You know I love a good metallic Sharpie. Those of you that know me, I love metallic Sharpies, and they work really well in this. So decorate this part of the banjo first, okay? And then you're going to attach the rubber bands. So I used five on them before, but um, depending on the size of your lid, it, it just depends. So you wanna get, I put, I put two on first. When I put the two on first, then I take the duct tape and I sort of attach it in the back um, because they'll start, to, they'll start to want to wiggle off. So I'm gonna scoot these over just a titch and you can hear. It's already making a little too, and I love it. So get these guys about like this. Put, start with two. And remember, we're going to use duct tape because if you put, you know what's going to happen when you put hot glue on there, right? I don't even need to tell you. It's going to bust that rubber band up so fast. Okay. So just get that on there nice and tight for the first two and kind of leave, oopsie. Ah! Sorry, leave a little space. For the others. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put two more on. Um, so let's see here. Hi to everyone that joined. It's so fun to see you guys on here. I get so distracted <laughs> seeing everybody on here that I can't handle it. I'm so easily distracted. Um, that's the funny part about doing a live is that you just see everyone on there. So now I've got three on. It's already starting to make a cool little tune. Um, and I'll put the fourth one on. You kind of have to be careful because you don't want to, they'll kind of want to pop off. So you just flip it over. Like I said, where you put it on here depends on the tune that it makes. And every, I noticed yesterday, um, I... 
every time I moved it even a little bit, even when I moved that rubber band over one titch, it changed the tone of it. Okay, so now you've got your four. I think I put five on the other one, so you might be able to fit five. But get that down pat, get your um, duct tape down pat. Okay, now on your popsicle stick. So you're gonna need to decorate this before you put it on. So a couple of ways, like I said, you can use paint. It dries really fast. Again, I love washi tape because I like things to go kind of quickly and washi tape is the best way. So sometimes though I've noticed that washi tape wants to come off and be naughty um, right here at the seam. So you may want to hit that with a little bit of a glue stick, okay? Um, but you can just go crazy and with this stuff and just go all the way up to the top. Okay. My goal is to order some new washi tape from <laughs> Clever Octopus or from Michael's because I literally got just this color combo is just not my most favorite but i'm not keen on going out right now i'm sure you can relate so thankfully washi tape tears so let me just get some washes on there i love using marker on it too so you could um you know you could do lots of different designs on it with your marker. You could grid off different areas. You can just kind of let your imagination go a little crazy with this. Just do whatever you want. I love Sharpies that are metallic, right? So get that metallic Sharpie on there. I like a good tartan pattern. Um, so as we go all the way up to the top, funkiest color scheme I've probably ever seen, but it doesn't matter. You guys get to do what you want because you're just being creative, right? Um, let's do some of this washi tape, okay? So let's use, ooh, it's like this hot green and it's gonna look kind of gross next to that other green. So I think I'll use the blue. Um, kind of like I'm getting it a slightly bit off. Hi, Cheryl. I see my neighbor on there. You guys, this is so fun. Hi, everyone. Okay. So when you get, let's do one more washi. Let's make it look kind of gross looking by putting this hot green next to <laughs> next to the blue so you want to leave just a little bit of the, the top for these little people who play the guitar um, <laughs> or the banjo I cannot remember what those are called those are the little things that tune the strings or that you tighten up um, sorry I can't remember what it's called um, let's do one more of this. Okay. Now, we've got our last little thing. Okay. So now all you need to do at the very top is you're going to put those four little sparklies. Again, you could, um, you could use sequins too. If you don't have these, just use sequins or whatever. Okay. Now I need to attach this to the back of this. So we've got to do it with our duct tape again. So all you got to do, super easy. It's like the easiest craft. And if you made a whole bunch of these and you started up a little band, how cool would that be? You've got your little at home band. I mean, what else are we going to do? We have got to start a band while we're home. Um, so we've, just duct tape that and okay there's my little guitar 
And remember, you can, you can hear it. It is so cool. I love this little guy. You're gonna decorate the outside a whole lot better than I did. You can even paint the outside. I'm not sure if you could paint over that, but you probably could, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the time over to Hannah. Hannah did a really neat um, painting demo on her Instagram, and her Instagram is just Hannah Bergstrom. Uh, it's still over there, and then it's also on her um, uh, Instagram. It's also on Instagram TV. But I wanted her to show it to you guys because it is such a fun and fast idea. One more quick thing I want to ask you guys to do is that while you're, um, if you're feeling stressed or you're feeling anxiety about all of this, I think the best thing to do is journal this because you get to tell your grandkids and your kids, I know isn't that weird to think about, but you get to tell everyone what happened. This is so unique. This is such a cool time of life, even though it's scary and we're feeling earthquake aftershocks and all these weird things and we're staying in our houses. Our grandkids and kids get to, to hear about this. So please journal it. You could make an art journal and it would be so fun because you can paint in it. You can do different things in it. So I'm going to turn the time over to Han and she's going to show you how to do the coolest, coolest thing. Hi, so I don't know if any of you guys follow me, but I posted about this, so I'm just going to show you like a little mini version of it. Okay, so I'm just going to do like this size. So I just had some acrylic paints laying around that I have used. Um, and if you don't have a lot of paints, you can mix different colors to make different shades. So, this is my paintbrush size, but you could do pretty much whatever. This is a very easy project. So, I'm just going to start with pink. And you can make whatever shapes that you want. I'm going to make a um, little shape like this. Okay, there's my first shape. I'm gonna make one more of that pink one. Okay, I've got some water here. I'm gonna clean my paintbrush off. Now I'm gonna do blue. And this paint, mine dries pretty quick, but once it's dry, you can start overlapping the colors. Okay, so there's my second shape that I've done. I'm gonna do one more up in this corner. Maybe one off to the side. Now I'm going to do the leaf shapes. So I have kind of a greenish blue here. I'm just going to do a basic leaf shape. That's what I have so far for the leaves. I'm gonna do maybe one more down in this corner, off to the side. And then I have one more shape I'm gonna do. 
with a different shade of green. If you don't have any greens, you can do any colors. It doesn't have to be green. I've seen this done with like all grays, so definitely can be whatever you want. So that's the other shade. Might have to go over it a couple of times if it's a lighter color, but. Okay. So then if you have a Sharpie, wait till it dries a little bit. This is almost dry. No, I'm okay. So I'm gonna start, let's see, this one, yeah, this blue one's a little bit dry. So as you can see, I've just made a few basic flower shapes. Um, you can get some ideas if you just Google like botanical drawings or botanical illustrations. There's a lot of good things you can find online. But you're just gonna lightly draw over with the Sharpie. Um, and do you have another shape? Thank you. I'll get another just in case. Yeah, this one's kind of dry. Make sure your Sharpie works. <gasps> Thank you. Okay, so pick a few different sh flower shapes you want to do. I'm going to do all the blue ones the same. So these are just petals. And you can start adding like little lines, little creases and folds. This is like very quick, very easy. Does not have to be perfect at all. So I'm going to start doing this pink one. In the middle I'm going to just do kind of some little half circles. And then I'm just going to do some overlapping petals. So that's what I have for my pink one. And you can go back and add more detail if you need to. And then for my leaf, I'm just going to do, I'm going to outline it. Just something super simple like this. I did it a bit more detailed than this one, as you can see. But yeah, that is the basic idea. So you're just making shapes and then you're filling it in with your Sharpie. But again, if you want a more detailed tutorial, I have one on my page and I'll go step by step on how to do this project. Hey, thanks, Anne. So fun to have Hannah home because I'm learning so many cool things. So, the, um, these are the supplies that you need for the banjo. So you're gonna need craft sticks the large ones. You're going to need the loom bands, washi tape, duct tape, sequins, um, or any kind of sparkly craft glue. Um, and of course you can use acrylic paint on this. Um, for Hannah's botanical painting that she just did, um, acrylic paint, just a paintbrush, a black sharpie. Um, I think that is this upside down? I can't tell. I know it's backwards. I think I wrote paintbrush twice. Um, <laughs> I did. Okay. And then uh, heavy paper. So the fun thing that, you know, Hans got this that she just got at the um, art store. Um, but you can get these at, at Michael's, Walmart, or whatever. It has 
nice thick paper. Wouldn't this be great for like an art journal? I think this would be perfect for an art journal. Um, I think that you could do your painting right here. When you do an art journal, you can write words on it. I mean, it really helps with um, any documenting that you want to do of this interesting time of our lives. So, um, and we get to be outside soon. And pretty soon, I'll be able to be teaching these classes uh, or doing these little fun demos for you outside. And so that will be great. So today, we're going to go out and see the animals again. This is what we do at the end of every class. We go see the alpacas and the sheep and the goats and um, the chickens and see what they're doing. So I'm going to unplug and I'm going to go out this morning. When I went out, they were <laughs> just sitting around. We were having a lot of aftershocks here. They were just sitting around, chewing their cud, having a great time. They, they're not stressed out at all. So they just are living the life out there. So we're gonna go see what they're doing. Give them a treat, okay? I know it's like an earthquake when I <laughs> undo that. Um, okay, we're gonna go out. And today I'm just gonna give them apples. Let's have Teddy say hi. Hi, Ted. Hello, Ted. Teddy's just sitting here being a very good boy. Very good boy. Oh, I see Maddie Moultrie on there. Hi. I see so many of my fun students. Hi to all of my former students. Um, anyway, Ted's being a good boy. Look at him lounging. Wow. He's got the life, eh? It is a gorgeous day out, you guys. Yay, we get to be outside. I'm going to give some mealworms um, to the chickens. And um, then I think, because it's so loud when I use a baggie, I had to put it in a paper towel. I'm going to give apples to um, the goaties and to the alpacas. And we'll just hope that they behave themselves today. I'm almost positive Winston won't. Um, Winston, my Angora goat. I've got three, but he's really feisty. They're going to see us coming. Here comes a chicken. Watch this chicken run. Oops. Set that down. <laughs> oh, sheepy's coming. There's my little lamb, Stelma and Louise. There's Blanche. Blanche has gotten so much nicer. Chickens. Here's some mealworms. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see them. This is not for any of you. These, these mealworms are for the chickens. They're chickies. Chickies are going to go over there. Let's... There's the alpacas just sitting out there relaxing. I guess they don't care for a treat today. But I am going to keep giving these to the chicken. Hey, chickens. Rose, Dorothy, sweet Dorothy. Here he comes. Oh my gosh. Here he comes. The little master of the pasture. Oh, <laughs> so I don't know if you heard what Louise just did. She just called everyone over to tell them there were treats here. Oh, Winston. She's just letting everyone know. For some reason, the alpacas are not that interested today. Boys, treat! Oh, sorry. Sorry, that was so loud, everyone. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but one of the alpacas is just rolling around. It's Diego. <whistles> Boys, treat! Oh, Winston. Well, the alpacas may not come for a treat. Let's give Winston his because he is going to climb right up. Winston. Oh, Winston. Oh, <laughs> Theo. Cute Theo. He's the sweetest. <laughs> Honey, look at your little hooves in my... Look at your little hooves. Let's... <laughs> There's 
Franklin. Oh, you got sticks in you. I think she's gonna scrap your head. Okay, here come the alpacas. Let's watch them run to us. Come on, boys. Come get a treat. Right. Right. Oh, whoa, we don't butt chickens. What do you think you're doing? Don't butt chickens, please. Poor chickens. Come on, boys. Here he comes. Hmm. Come on, boys. I've got a treat. Her or Patchy. Come on, Patch. Here comes little fluffy Patch. Um, excuse me. Here he comes. Here comes my best boy. Bite you. Ow! Ow, don't bite. Don't bite. You're no biting. Why would a guy like you bite me? Why? Why? Come on, Patchy. I've got a treat for you. Come on, Harrison. Harrison. Here, Harry. Come on. That a boy. Patchy. Oh, honey, you're. Uh, I love you. Come on, Patchy. Let's get your treat. Would you like an apple? Would you like an apple, Patchy? Here, sweet Patch. Patchy, here. It always just like skulks into the picture. Yeah, you do. Okay, hello, Harrison. Look at my sweet Harrison. This is their top knot. Those of you who've been out here know they hate to be touched. <laughs> they hate to be touched on their top knot. Oh, sweet patch needs a trim. They're going to get their spa day, which is where they get sheared. Um, coming up in April. Everyone's getting sheared on the same day. And we do a compassionate shearer named Pierce and ATN helps him. She's one of our shearers too and they are amazing. And they do it really gently. And they help these guys have a good spa experience. They have, they check everyone's toes. They check everyone's, um, just their general health. They check their teeth. These boys are gonna need to get their fighting teeth trimmed by my vet. Um, when they're about this age, they start to get back teeth. They don't have any top teeth. None of, no animals out here have top teeth. They have a rigid gum line. Um, and no sweets. And so they'll get their, they get these back teeth when they're about three or four called fighting teeth. And they can really injure each other with fighting teeth. The alpacas, not the goaties and not the sheep. Um, but... Harrison, who's kind of my alpha right here, he's been fighting a lot. Um, <laughs> hello, Theo. He's been fighting a lot, and so we're going to get those, make sure he doesn't have, excuse me, his fighting teeth. Because what, he's going to spit, I can tell. What um, we don't want is him injuring another alpaca because the other boys are, are not quite as alpha as he is. Um, by any stretch. So, sweet Harrison lost a tooth in a fight, but they grow back. So, don't you? These two, oh, this is Theo. He's not, he's not the king of the hill out here. So you can see on Theo, I don't know if you guys can see this, on the tip of Theo's horns, he scratches his, himself so much that he gets like felted wool or it's not wool, sorry, it's mohair, felted mohair on the tip of his horns from scratching. Oh, sweetie. Now, I think I'm gonna put these treats. <clears throat> this is their little drive-through, <laughs> their little vintage 1950s car hop tray that they like to eat off of. Here, sweet pea, there you go. Put this on the tray. Of course, it looks like you need to slow down, buddy. I've told you guys before, Harrison choked and almost died. 
it. So we got to be careful with him. He likes to scarf his food real fast. Can you see his teeth first? Show him your teeth, these that are trying to grow back. Show him your teeth. Hates to be touched. All right, you sweet angels. Look at them all. Look at them all. Okay. Would that fun for you, Harrison? Would that fun? Did you like the treats? Look at Harrison's fleece. Let's get in there and see how deep his neck is. Look at these curls. These are such beautiful curls. And I call it his Winston's little mohair suit. You got a mohair suit? Do you have a mohair suit? We call him Frankie in the goats instead of Benny in the jets. Because Franklin, sweet Franklin, he's over there. He's kind of shy. All right, we're done. You know what, Harrison? We're all done. We're done. I love you. Can you give kisses? Good kissing. Such good kissing, thank you.